Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us and being so timely. We are going to give our community a few more minutes to join us this evening. Uh, so go ahead and enjoy our regular community meeting music soundtrack. We're going to be going on to the next song, and we'll be getting started shortly. Thank you for joining us. everyone just uh letting you know we are just waiting for a few more folks to come in and join us this evening we will be starting very shortly thanks for being here uh,
All righty, we're going to go on ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the Hill City C's uh, uh, quarterly community meeting. As you all know, we have a quarterly meeting every quarter, obviously, uh, but it is such our pleasure to uh, be with our community. Uh, we hope to get with you in person soon, uh, but uh, you know we still have to plan for proper accommodation. So we appreciate you still logging on digitally. Additionally, this is, of course, our annual uh, year in review, so uh, we will have lots to share with you about our accomplishments for this year since this is our annual meeting and we are just so thankful uh, that you have joined to hear about those. This is also uh, a um, development activities meeting for two uh, uh, developments, 346 Miller Street and Lecce School. Uh, you have heard about those um, presentations, excuse me, those projects, and so you're going to hear even more uh, today. Uh, this is, of course, through our community's unified voice on community development, uh, the development review panel. You'll hear more about that later. And then, of course, we'd like to get through some updates, if time allows, to share with you um, information about what's happening in the Hill District and, of course, the Lower Hill District. Then, of course, we'll have some questions and answers. A little housekeeping. We will take limited Q&A after each agenda item. Uh, feel free to... Um, Drop your questions in the chat on Zoom. We have individuals monitor monitoring that and we will respond uh, in chat uh, or we will re read it live. Uh, so I want you to you know, make sure that you do that. If you want to ask your question live, please leave a note in the chat uh, and we will unmute you at the appropriate time. Last but certainly not least, you know, just basic ground rules. We uh, can dis disagree with respect and we do ask everybody to, you know, just honor our community and you know avoid personal attacks and name calling uh, because of course we cannot tolerate that. So I know we don't have to worry about that with this group, but did wanna put those ground rules out. All right, just a quick uh, up organizational update. You all know uh, the Hill CDC, and if you don't, uh, we're happy that you're here to learn about the Hill CDC. Uh, we are a place-based organization focused on the redevelopment and revitalization of the historic Hill District neighborhood, where cultural legacy meets future innovation. So we are steep in our cultural legacy, and yet we have a firm planet, firmly planted foot in the future. Uh, and of course, we are celebrating 34 years of operation. So uh, that is extraordinary for a nonprofit, and it's just uh, I am, you know, grateful not just to serve in the capacity of president and CEO and to be able to work for our community, but to still have an institution in our neighborhood that is um, that is 34 years old and, and serving uh, in the best interest uh, of the neighborhood. So the Hill CDC works in partnership with residents and stakeholders to create, promote, and implement strategies and, pro strategies and programs that connect plans, policies, and people to drive compelling community development opportunities in the greater Hill District. And I want to say about our mission that it is not necessarily to do all of the development, but it is to drive development and to facilitate development in a way that represents our community's stated wishes in the greater Hill District Master Plan. So um, 
a, a few things that we focus on and what you'll often hear, hear us talking about is people, place, and policy. The three Ps, we focus on building up the people while we build up the place. And we of course advocate for equitable development policy to ensure that what we say we want to do is achievable because the policy is there to support our work. Uh, we break our work down in these specific categories. So real estate development, we specifically focus on the commercial core and home ownership. Uh, so commercial redevelopment is really important to us. We know that, um, you know, really seeing the, the main street developed, really seeing, uh, you know, our commercial corridor, Heron Avenue, Center Avenue developed is really, really important. And of course, uh, home ownership, affordable home ownership in particular. We also work uh, a lot with entrepreneurs. We have, uh, we've, we've served hundreds of entrepreneurs over the years. Felicity will give you an update about this specific year, uh, but we work with uh, entrepreneurs and business owners. We do a lot of home ownership preparation. And of course, we are really passionate about using art and culture as an economic driver. And specifically, we are passionate about Black arts. Um, policy and planning, as I just mentioned, the promotion of equitable development and neighborhood planning is, it is so critically important to our ability to fulfill our community stated goals. So uh, we, this is, as I mentioned, our annual meeting. So we're going to do some annual year in review highlights. We have gotten some requests uh, for our annual report. So you can consider this a report out uh, to, for those who are interested. And for all of you all who follow us, we just every year, whenever possible, try to summarize exactly what we've been up to. And so you can find more information on this on our website. Uh, and of course, this presentation will be available to refer back to. So first things first, you know, I have to not just recognize our new team members, I want to recognize our existing team members first. Uh, I want to recognize uh, Felicity Williams, who manages and uh, facilitates our programs and policy work. Uh, she governs that work. And as you all know, if you're doing work in the Hill District, you know she is extraordinarily hardworking uh, and bright. Just like the rest of our staff, I want to recognize Jordan Smith, who uh, staffs the um, policy and programs uh, team as well, and, and specifically does a ton of work around the arts and culture. And Jordan is, as you know, if you've met him, super positive and energetic and really passionate about the arts and just want to recognize his work. And then our real estate um, uh, team members, I want to recognize Ray Bowman, who's our real estate coordinator, uh, who has uh, been in the trenches working every day, project managing, alongside Michelle Watson, who is an awesome team member focused on a lot of our home ownership work. Uh, and uh, last but certainly not least, we have Donna Bauer, who is our senior fund development officer uh, and working in the trenches with me, with me every day to, to see what kind of capital we can bring to our community to redevelop our neighborhood. So to our new team members now, um, Jeff Bachman joins us as our, our director of neighborhood development. Uh, Jeff brings uh, nearly you know, 30 years of experience uh, focused on redevelopment. He has worked uh, on the banking side. He has worked in the community development side. He has worked uh, as well uh, in governmental agencies. So he has a broad range of experience and we are very fortunate to have him join our team. Uh, so you can wave Jeff. You'll hear a little bit from Jeff later. And I'd also like to welcome Nareda Polanco, who brings a considerable amount of experience, uh, particularly around finance and nonprofits, uh, and is very, very passionate about systems, which I am always excited about because I'm also passionate about systems. Um, and so she's here to help uh, develop the necessary systems. So we want to welcome both of them to the Hill District uh, and um, to the Hill CDC. So I'm going to jump right in here and do a few real estate um, updates. And then we're going to hear from Jeff on one particular part. Um, so let's talk first about the 40 units of affordable housing uh, that uh, is under development right here on our commercial corridor. It's so exciting to have the New Granada Square Apartments building uh, under, uh, under construction. You'll hear a little bit more about that soon. 40,000 uh, plus square feet of commercial space will be um, in the New Granada Square block in the historic New Granada building, as well as uh, seven homes are under construction or have been completed this year. Um, and so you can uh, register for our whole District 100 program. We'll share more about that uh, a little bit later. 
uh, but uh, we are just so thrilled to be able to deliver home ownership units. You'll see some pictures soon. Uh, the affordable homes remaining to be rehabilitated this year and or early next year are 14 homes for um, the HD 100 program. And then commercial rentals, we have uh, immediately two properties, but we have a number of properties coming online next year. Uh, so if you are interested in a commercial storefront, and we do know that many of you have joined our commercial registry for those who are interested in being in our neighborhood. As a business, you can register at hilldistrict.org slash HD rising. Uh, but we have uh, worked very steadily to make sure that those uh, rentals uh, can be made available. Um, of course, we have much needed repairs and updates at Malliance Manor and Western Manor. These are two senior buildings on Bedford Avenue and they are currently being scheduled. We are working feverishly to make sure uh, that, that those properties um, both uh, are restored and developed in a way that gives our seniors the highest quality of life. I just realized I was muted, so you can't hear me. Jeff, you should be unmuted now, and we can hear from you about our senior uh, housing work. Terrific. I think if you flip to the next slide, you'll see some bullet points there, or I, not. I, but, no, no, no let, me, let me pause for a second. Let's come back to that. I think those slides are at the end of all of the real estate slides. So I'll go through New Granada Square, and then we'll circle back to you, Jeff. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, let's talk a little bit about New Granada Square. So New Granada uh, Square, as you all know, has 40 artist apartments, really focused, focused on creatives uh, to live in those apartments. Uh, this project is under construction and going vertical. Uh, so construction began in June of this year uh, and construction will be completed in the fall of next year. We project October of 2022, uh, barring any, you know, any construction challenges. But we, we feel really, really great about our construction schedule and our progress. Hopefully you are excited to see the largest scale development happening in the Hill District probably in two generations, not just one. Uh, so I just want to uh, really, again, recognize our team here, recognize our partner, CH and Housing, uh, for delivering this project of scale. This project is a $16 million project. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, we go out, we procure those resources so that we can bring them back and put them and invest them into the community. And that takes an extraordinarily amount, extraordinary amount of, um, of coordination with uh, government agencies, with government government partners, with private partners. Uh, it is an extraordinary feat. And the fact that our neighborhood is still uh, a predominantly um, low income and working class neighborhood to be putting this kind of capital investment into the heart of our commercial corridor is tremendous. I wanna applaud all of you for your patience, for your support. We cannot do this work without you. We do this work for you. Uh, with that said, we have met uh, to date a 60.5% MBE participation rate. So I, I'm just, I'm so excited. I can, I can barely sit here because that's extraordinary. Now, we are just um, making our way through, you know, we're not promising that we will be there. At the very end of the project, we committed to 40%. Um, but we are doing everything that we can uh, to, to meet our goals. And then we are at 18.5% WBE. And so you will uh, we'll continue to report out accurately as time progresses. If you want to see the digital groundbreaking, as you know, this was um, uh, our groundbreaking happened in the spring. And so, um, we, you know, we were still in the midst of um, the uh, lockdown period. Uh, for, for COVID, so we did a digital groundbreaking because I mean, come on now, you can't do a project like this and not have something. And so we did a digital groundbreaking in phase uh, groups and had people come out and do a whole production just so you could be a part of it. We have shared that on our website at hilldistrict.org slash New Granada Square. I ask you all to go and uh, watch that video in full. We do wanna thank all of the funding partners that have helped us to get uh, to this point of development. This is just hot off the press and pictures from today. You can, you know it's today because the sky was gloomy today, um, mm -hmm. but we went out and snapped a few pictures just so you can see uh, exactly what's going on. Um, you can see the walls going up on the credit union side. You can see the walls going up on the black beauty side. I do wanna note that that piece of art, that beautiful piece of art has been formally documented. We hired a specialist to come in with the highest level resolution 
camera that is possible um, to take a picture of that so that it can be reproduced and used in the future uh, in some way, shape or form in the building or in the community. Uh, we think that that's the way to honor our cultural legacy, to honor the work that has been done by artists in our community or for our community. So a little bit about the workforce numbers, um, uh, because you have the MBE, which is the business um, reporting, and then you have the workforce numbers. So to date, uh, recruitment, we've had 31 Section 3 workers recruited for the positions at the New Granada Apartments, 22 Hill residents, nine from other zip codes. Placement, we've placed five Section 3 workers or, who were hired before vertical building work, three from the Hill District, one formerly from the Hill District, one recruited for a specific skill set. Training, nine. Section three workers received their OSHA, which means Occupational Safety Health Administration training um, worth uh, 100, uh, that, that training is worth $120 per person. Six of those people were from the Hill District. Uh, two already worked for Mystic. One is a potential hire on another site. So again, you don't necessarily have to work on our site, but we want you to be able to work. Uh, and so that's very, very important to us. Uh, we hope that you will participate in our programs. Felicity will cover some of our programs later. Um, and lastly, uh, relative to the workforce information, our upcoming hires, uh, we have uh, plumbing, electrical, insulation, drywall, painting, landscaping, and post cleaning. Uh, we have already done some of our contracting, but in terms of the workforce, the opportunity to work, please make sure you participate in our Workforce Wednesdays if you have not. Now, the renovation of the historic New Granada Theater building, it has started. We are so excited. You probably saw the fences go up uh, around the, the historic building. We have started the internal demolition um, and that was released to an MBE contractor. We, um, just in case you do not know, this is a $42 million development. Um, just the historic theater building and the new office building our $42 million development. We have been doing uh, everything from, um, you know, procuring to uh, doing MBE outreach to working uh, with the national government to make sure that we recognize all of the historic uh, protocols that are necessary to bring funding in. We've been working with the Urban Redevelopment Authority on the adjacent parcel and also for uh, some of the funding that's necessary. Uh, we've been working with the state on funding. So again, I just want to emphasize that and thank our team here for the tremendous work that's put in to bring this kind of capital into the Hill District neighborhood. Because quite frankly, um, when the community is not involved in the redevelopment, we just simply cannot assure that the outcome is going to be for the community. As most activists will say and advocates will say, if it, if, if, if it is not, um, if it is for me, then I must be at the table and be a part of, of that decision and then also that ownership. And so we talk a lot about ownership here as well. All right, um, we completed the design work uh, for the anchor tenant, uh, which as you all know, the University of Pittsburgh Community Engagement Center, um, you probably know Kirk Holbrook and uh, Lena Dostilio uh, and his and uh, their team over at uh, the Blakey Center where they're currently located. Um, they have a couple of other employees that you probably know as well. We wanna thank them for their great work. They will be moving into the historic New Granada building and then into the adjacent office building that's connected uh, by a, a glass thoroughfare. Uh, so we are working very, very uh, diligently on providing the space that they need so that they can move into their space. So we're excited to be uh, in partnership with them as well. Just a quick refresher on what's going to be in the building. Felicity, you can move through these pretty quickly. On the first floor, we're gonna have a food hall, foods uh, of the uh, African diaspora. So that's Creole, Seoul, uh, Caribbean, uh, you know, uh, whatever you can think of relative to our culture, we really want that to be on Main Street in this food hall. There will be a small black box theater of approximately 100 seats. And then of course, we are really focused on making sure that it is accessible to the community. Um, moving to the second floor, this will be a multi-purpose event space that will be um, a major, a massive scale. Uh, up to 900 occupants will be able to fit in that space. 
So we're really focused on uh, working with a partner who's going to bring national and local acts to foster a 16 hour environment here in our neighborhood. Um, we want this whole development to really bring the kind of vitality that we wanna see on our business district. Uh, the historic New Granada building third floor will have the Center for African American Poetry and Poetics, um, not the entire department, but programming for that department um, as a part of the Community Engagement Center, the Jazz Center, Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence, a STEAM studio, and of course, lecture spaces. Moving to the adjacent building, which will be attached to the historic building, there will be uh, three floors of flexible commercial office space, 10,000 square feet of that will be occupied um, by the Community Engagement Center and the balance of that, we are really targeting uh, a program and or programs that really synergize with our, our idea of creating a black business district with anchor retail, uh, office space and so forth. And last but not least, we uh, plan to have uh, a um, cafe that's a multi-genre uh, music cafe. So we are looking for tenants for the, the music cafe and for the other uh, commercial spaces that we're talking about today. What's going to happen on um, uh, on the roof? Uh, so there, there will, will be a rooftop venue on the new uh, office building. So very important for you to know that. We are really thrilled to be able to bring that um, into onto our uh, commercial corridor. We know that there are only a couple of rooftop spaces in Pittsburgh, uh, or a few rooftop spaces in Pittsburgh, two of which are in the Hill District now at the Grayson Center and then also at the Y, uh, and this will add to that existing environment. And of course, there'll be an outdoor plaza and additional uh, dining venue. All right, so I am going to um, run through the real estate portion of our Hill District 100. Uh, program. Uh, again, shouting out uh, Michelle Watson, uh, especially, and Ray uh, Bowman, uh, who has been uh, supporting in this effort. This year, we have sold two properties, uh, two Webster Avenue homes for less than $155,000 uh, um, on average. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's less than $900 a month and, and considerably less than that. Um, to be able to acquire a home uh, that is somewhere between, in most cases for our home, $600 and $900 a month. That's normally less than what somebody is paying in rent. Um, and so the, the reason why we do that work is because we know that a lot of people are being displaced. Uh, we know that a lot of people are being, uh, are unable to afford uh, rents, not just in the Hill District, but throughout the city. And we want people to have an opportunity to stay in the neighborhood. Both properties were completely rehabbed with new roofing, uh, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, which you know homes in the Hill District don't really come, uh, or in Pittsburgh in general, don't come with built-in HVAC. So that's a, a real perk. And then of course, uh, new bathrooms, kitchens. Next. Uh, just a few before and afters, Felicity's going to navigate through here. This is, um, these are both on Webster Avenue. You can see here we have an uh, exposed uh, brick wall. That's the before picture. I, you know, this project was actually in the middle of demolition. Uh, the URA had owned the project for maybe the home for over 20 years, uh, and it was about to be demolished. Uh, and we got a phone call from one of our, our residents, in fact, Brenda Tate, and, you know, she urged us to do whatever we can, and we did intercede. That was a tough project. I mean, you know, we really had to, um, you know, do a lot to make this project happen. But as you can see, the results were beautiful. This is before and after, beautiful new bathrooms. We always redo all of the, you know, normally the entire uh, home, but especially the bathrooms and kitchens. All right, and so uh, here's what you can expect coming up. Um, so we have five, uh, five, uh, 522 Landless Place. That is unfortunately under contract. And as you can see, that one was sold for uh, 119. And that is, again, extraordinary to be able to get into a home for that price because now we're talking about less than 650 per month for mortgage. It is extraordinary. We encourage you all if you have not to sign up for our Hill District 100 program at hilldistrict.org slash HD100. Here are some uh, before pictures of that property. I'm gonna show you just a couple of afters here. Again, new carpet, new flooring, new bathrooms. This property is still under construction. The final um, uh, updates have not been completed yet. Yes. 
okay, we have some new ones coming. And if you think 119 is extraordinary or less than 650 a month, yeah, hear this. The Shawnee properties, um, this is in the Upper Hill District, will be priced as low as $85,000. We do want to thank um, you know, the URA. We want to thank Neighborhood Allies. We want to thank um, Landmarks Capital Corporation for partnering with us to deliver this project. Uh, it has been a tough project also. Uh, Felicity, I believe you may have some befores in here, but it, it's these are smaller units, which, which is great for a starter home if this is your first home, or if you're an empty nester, or if you're just looking to downsize, these are perfect. Um, and so these are two bedroom units, uh, one and a half baths, including first floor powder rooms, new kitchens, new baths. Some will have an open kitchen concept. Washer and dryer hookups will be in the basement. These are row homes. These are in the final stages of construction, um, but three of them are at $85,000 each. One is at 95,000. These are at 907, 909, 911 and 913 Shawnee Street. Uh, we, I just talked a little bit about what you can find in the unit. Uh, in the unit. And what I'm expecting um, uh, you all to do is to go out and share this with the community and say, did you know you can own a home for basically less than $500 a month? right? Um, because it just doesn't really happen very much, uh, if ever, anymore. Uh, this is a very, very rare opportunity. Uh, please share the good news. Uh, you must earn less than, uh, Felicity, if you go back one slide. You must earn less than the 50% area median income in order to qualify for these homes. Again, we are targeting vulnerable renters in this situation, people who are likely to be displaced. And because of the tremendous amount of uh, funding we were able to raise for this project, it is really, really focused on those renters who would otherwise not have many other options. So if you're interested, go to hilldistrict.org slash HD100 and register. So that's how it started. And this is how it's going. You can see on the left, there was not even a roof. Um, it, it, it go, there's a lot of work that goes into these mm -hmm. units. Okay, so um, so that gives you a sense of some of the accomplishments we have had we've had relative to real estate this year. I'm going to hand it over to Jeff Bachman. Um, Jeff, you may want to talk a little bit about your um, your experience and background, uh, just a little bit relative to um, these kinds of projects, because I think it's a, a real uh, opportunity for people to learn about how committed we are to these specific units. Felicity, we'll next slide. Jeff, you are unmuted. Terrific. Well, I'm not nearly as eloquent as marimba, but I'll do the best I can with what I've got. What you're looking at is the uh, uh, Bedford Senior Campus. This is the old tuberculosis hospital. I'm sure you're all familiar with the real estate. Some of you may, in fact, be residents here. Uh, the building that Felicity is pointing to is Malayan's Manor. It's not named for Marimba. It's actually named for her father. The other uh, one there is Western. This is the HUD 202 project. The other was a tax credit deal. Um, my background, frankly, is in tax credits. I've been a professional at the uh, asset management on the credit side of the business for almost 30 years. Uh, everywhere from a, a development in the southeast corner of San Francisco, where I was the nonprofit developer, uh, up to Fannie Mae, where I retired in 2008, and I took a job in Los Angeles for 10 years, and came to Pittsburgh. Marimba coaxed me out of retirement by the sheer <laughs> strength of her personality and the vision that she embodied. And I don't know why I came back to work, but here I am. These two buildings, uh, it's best to look at them from this uh, angle because you get a sense of the complexity of the roof design on the Lions Manor. There's a lot of different elevations and different heights. These buildings were developed back in the early 90s. All of these roofs had useful lives long past. These buildings should have been rehabbed and, and re-syndicated some years ago. But they were owned by, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a nonprofit, Western especially owned by a nonprofit that's largely uh, defunct now. Very committed uh, uh, local nonprofits and uh, religious leaders. Some of those organizations are out of business. And what, <clears throat> excuse me, Marimba's done is brought uh, Hill District CDC resources uh, to the table in sponsorship to try and restore these. These roofs, because they are so old, have been leaking for some time, and there's resulting damage inside the buildings and inside the units. 
Uh, so our effort now is focused primarily on stabilizing the buildings. You know, you'll see here uh, 72 units of senior housing. And these folks are, are hill folks that we want to be able to redevelop these buildings and reposition them so that folks can live in the quality of housing that you would want your own parents to live in and they can stay in the Hill District and age in place. Um, we stepped in here in 2019 because of the defunct owner, which I mentioned briefly, and now we have extensive needs because they were unloved for some time. Uh, the good news here is that we've lined up the city through the URA and the state through PHFA and the federal government through HUD to do this redevelopment approach. And people have generally signed on to uh, the way that uh, I plan to phase the construction and attack the problem here. We're getting a lot of technical assistance. We're getting <clears throat> staff resources and we're getting access to funding opportunities, which we have not yet landed, but for which we are uh, uh, really working hard to establish. The first order of business here is going to be to fix the roofs and the masonry to stop the water infiltration. We can't do anything inside the building. It doesn't make sense until those issues are resolved. It's difficult because we're coming into winter and some of those materials don't work well when it gets below freezing. So while I'd hope to start earlier, I'm saying now it's probably a 90 day, 30 to 90 day uh, window to start to get all of the stars lined up and get progress going. Um, the vision here is a completely revitalized Bedford Senior Campus for the residents and for the community. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And with that, we will be transitioning. I did drop in the chat. I received uh, a, a request. If you are interested in uh, our Hill District 100 properties, please sign up for our Hill District 100 program. You can register at www.hilldistrict.org backslash Hill District 100. You will see an orange button uh, to, to, to join and you'll fill out a Google form and what member of our programs team will follow up with you. Speaking of programs, I'm going to move right ahead with our uh, year in review uh, programming items. So starting with our small business entrepreneurship work. So we've served over 130 small businesses and entrepreneurs through workshops, one-on-one -on -one technical support with our university partners. So Chatham University, University of Pittsburgh, Duquesne University, as well as Allegheny County through um, making sure that we are sharing opportunities, resources, and other events. Uh, a couple of our programming and small business initiatives to highlight will be our MBE maximization work. This has been ongoing work. Um, we started this actually in 2018. We tested it on our own New Granada project. That is the reason that we have over 60.5% MBE participation to date because we use our MBE maximization program. Uh, and so we partner uh, with different organizations to do training as well as make sure we are connecting uh, MBE and WBE businesses uh, to uh, development opportunities in the Greater Hill District. We also make sure that we are connecting them to resources, so funding opportunities and things of that sort. Um, looking at our Hill Tech Society, so that is specifically focused on tech and innovation uh, in the Hill District, helping to build that community. We know that this is a direction that the, the city of Pittsburgh is heading. This is a major industry. We want to make sure that uh, Black people and specifically Hill District residents are taking it, are getting, are able to take advantage of this in this wave and of the, these good jobs, this entrepreneurship and economic dollars. So we partnered to do training. We did a uh, device giveaway. Some of you may have participated in that this year. We did a device giveaway to folks during COVID uh, to help their support their business development, what they needed as a business owner. Our capital accessibility and readiness. We just wrapped up that webinar series in partnership with Bridgeway Capital, um, helping people do a deep dive into how to access loans and funding, walking you through a balance sheet, walking you through um, understanding all of your financials and your accounting, walking you through loan applications, walking you through what it's like to work with a CDFI or community development financing institution versus a traditional bank. Uh, and then also wanna highlight our Hills Kitchen Initiative. So we've done some events this year related to tenant recruitment. Uh, we talk, we're talking about all the development that we have on Center Avenue. We need to fill those spaces with tenants. And so we're of course working with our uh, network of small businesses um, to help fill that space. We are also have been connecting them to funding opportunities, particularly related to COVID-19 relief. There are some specific funding uh, for restaurants and, and food-based businesses that we connected them to. 
here are some flyers that show you some of the things that I have talked about. So you'll see this, uh, the Center Avenue restaurant space info session. That's what I talked to you about where we were connecting people to tenant opportunities as well as resources and funding, our biz uh, and tech boot camp, our accessing capital and capital readiness, our Bridgeway Capital Bid Program. This is specific to MBEs and WBEs in the construction trades. Um, this is an initiative to help them get the back office support that they need. So we partnered with Bridgeway to help walk people through that process. And then on the right, you see a little bit of our statistics from our 2021 device giveaway. So 75% of our awardees had personal income below $30,000 annually. 100% uh, of our awardees were, of course, Hill District residents, um, and 75% of them were Black women, and the remaining 25% were Black men. So that's just a few of the of the, the highlights of the statistics that I wanted to, to mention. Moving forward to our Hill District 100. So Marimba talked to you about the Hill District 100 from a real estate side already. She talked to you about our team members, uh, Michelle, uh, Ray, and Jeff, who are all working on this uh, our Hill District 100 work. Um, we also have a programmatic side to our Hill District 100 pro, uh, initiative, uh, working on the homeownership preparation over, of over 100 individuals this year in partnership with the Urban League, the Housing Authority, and other partners in monthly workshops. You'll see an example of the flyer there on the right. Uh, we've also had some special guests participate in these workshops, including Key Bank and State Farm Insurance, helping people know about different mortgage opportunities and related to State Farm Insurance, what you need to know about homeowners insurance and why it's important and necessary for you to have. I'm going to move next into Nafasian Center. So I'm going to ask Jordan Smith uh, to come up here because, you know, he no one talks about Nafasi better, is more passionate about Nafasi than Jordan. So I'm going to have Jordan uh, cover these next set of slides here. Thank you, Felicity. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, we can. Word, word, word. Sorry. Baby life. Um, awesome. So, yes. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you, everyone. So Nafasion Center, as she said, is our artist residency program. And here you see a group of our first artist res artists and residents, a great folks starting from the top left. We have Glow B, Glory Barnett. In the middle, you see Cynthia Kenderson. To the right, we see Deborah Daly. Bottom left, Ray Butler. Middle bottom, Ruby Dawn Sergis. And the bottom right is a group photo that we actually had taken. And the furthest person to the right of that photo is James Yaya, a Hill District resident. We can go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. And just so here you see a list of our public programming that we have. Visions of Now exhibition was our opening group show between two of our uh, three of our resident artists, Cynthia Kenderson, Devron Daly, and Yaya Huff. Carousel Cafe virtual tastings with Chef Olafemi. That was awesome. If you didn't get a chance to participate in that, please stay tuned because I hope that we continue to work with Chef Olafemi. There are some plans in the work that's going to be awesome. Bars and Bikes, um, our, our, our every other month um, brunch, we have every third Saturday. One second, my love. Every third Saturday of the month, we host a brunch. It's kind of an opportunity for folks around the neighborhood, folks interested in art, folks who already collect art to really come in, get an intimate, get an intimate opportunity to meet our artists and also see some of the body of work that they have going on and purchase new art. Uh, Center Avenue Mural Community Workshops. One of our resident artists, artist Yaya Huff, was actually commissioned by the 58th International to do a mural that's going to be located on Center Avenue. Uh, so at, as that location is finalized and they begin to release some more information, you know, we'll also be able to share that information. It was an excellent time. We had some community members come out. We did some art making in the space at Nafasi right on Center Avenue. And all of the things that were created during those workshops we'll kind of see incorporated in Yaya's larger uh, mural. We have some times where uh, University in Pittsburgh, um, big shout out to Dr. Glasgow who came and you know his class um, the history of Black Pittsburgh you know really because Nafasion Center itself as most folks know who are from the neighborhood the building holds a lot of uh, historical uh, precedence in itself so you know we really got a chance to work with some students who were very very engaged they were actually very knowledgeable about the building very knowledgeable about the Hill District and they were super engaged so that was awesome uh, we had our Summer Art Market with PPC and the BEC. That was awesome. We had over 20 artists and entrepreneurs inside and outside of our space. So really getting into those activation of the space, physical and the green space surrounding. So that was awesome. And last bullet here is in the Fossey Artist Conversation Series. We hold a quarterly conversation of various panel members. And our first conversation series was about connecting community through public art. So uh, thank you to Brother Justin, uh, Sister Kendra, Camo Customs, uh, Cameron Nesbitt, we had in Jamie and Jai and Brother James Huff, you see here. So that's a photo. The top right photo is uh, from our panel and some of the other photos are just some, some of the events that I mentioned. We have the buyers and bites photo. We have some photos from our summer art market. So we've been kind of busy 
uh, you know, really getting into trying to be able to maximize the uh, space while still commuting safely and setting out, you know, weather permitting now. And moving over to this final slide, these are just some of the beautiful folks that we worked with uh, on our uh, creative business development while each artist is, you know, continuing to work on their body of work and enhance their creative practice. We're assisting that through a series of creative business development series. Uh, so, you know, we have done some things around branding and marketing. We have done some things around business planning, group wellness sessions. Uh, we at, at the beginning, we start with some identification of each individual strengths, and we kind of have like a small coaching session on that really to help identify and assist what exactly the goals are for each um, resident artist while their time in the residency. So, you know, we've been busy uh, and just kind of stay tuned for what we have next next year. Thanks, Felicity. Thank you, Jordan. All right, Marimba, I'm gonna hand it back over to you to talk about our development and funding work. Excellent, thank you, Felicity, and thank you, Jordan and Jeff, uh, for those uh, updates. I wanna acknowledge Donna Bauer from our team, uh, who is my right hand here and trying to bring capital to the community uh, to do all of these projects. Um, so the affordable home ownership work that we do uh, is quite costly. Uh, we were fortunate to receive $400,000 from the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency to renovate five townhomes on Bedford Avenue. You probably have noticed this row of homes on Bedford Avenue. About three or four of them are occupied and the remaining have been vacant for quite some time. Uh, they are in really poor condition and we have been raising money to rehab those properties. So this was a major win to be able to bring that kind of capital. However, we are still raising because they need new roofs, they need total gut rehab. So, um, so I wanted to make sure that you all knew that we are working diligently to rehab that property, those properties, that row of properties, which we hope will be a, another, a, a row of beautiful homes in the Hill District again in the future. Arts um, and economic development, as I said, we are very much committed to creating a black arts cultural corridor uh, here in the Hill District that also has a, uh, a, a very solid focus on economic development and commerce. And so we are one of only two new communities accepted in the entire state of Pennsylvania by the PA Council on the Arts as a creative community. Um, and so we are thrilled uh, to be doing that work uh, you will be hearing more about it. Uh, the program provides funding to help um, create a neighborhood arts and cultural district uh, at $25,000 a year over the next several years. So that is very exciting because anyone who's ever done work around economic development uh, and arts knows that it can be very, very challenging to, uh, to raise the money that you need over the long haul. So let's celebrate that victory. Now to the big kahuna, the new Granada Square. Uh, this is the one that takes a pound of flesh out of all of us. Although there are a few more now that have come, that have come up that are trying to, uh, uh, you know, compete here. But we have received um, 4.5 million in local philanthropic support and. Uh, and we have begun uh, interior renovations on the historic New Granada building, and we are still raising. So. Anybody remember how much I said the project cost? If you don't, let me remind you, it is a $42 million project. So we have been able to put together capital from lots of different sources. However, uh, we, we will have to raise philanthropic dollars in order to close the gap. This is so important to understand uh, when I when we talk about what it will take to, redevelopment, to, to re redevelop the community, it will take collaboration it will take commitment and it will take longevity um, and commitment to the goals. And, and here's why, because that is where people invest, where they know they're gonna get a return on their investment. And the Hill District has been working together solidly now for the past seven to 10 years to really demonstrate that our community is ready for capital investment, our community wants to see capital, and we need to keep that energy. We need to really continue to collaborate at a maximum level so that we can see the rest of the projects on the corridor and within the rest of the neighborhood get the capital that they need to be fulfilled. Government dollars, it's not going to be enough. Private dollars alone won't be enough. You're also going to need grants in order to make projects in a community like the Hill District happen. Um, and so, so I just want to share that information. That is huge news. We will absolutely be um, thanking all of our, our supporters, but uh, we just want to take this opportunity to, to let you know what's going on and how this work is happening. 
Uh, we have received support also from uh, some national players and interest from national players. So that is um, just, you know, over the top exciting, but not surprising because the Hill District is a national treasure. The Hill District is viewed right alongside, when we talk about cultural legacy, when we talk about a musical le legacy, uh, particularly around jazz and culture, the Hill District is named right up there with Harlem and Chicago. So understand that, you know, we are building uh, upon our cultural legacy, but we are building something for the future also. It's not just about history. It's about how do you leverage your history for the future and the National Trust for Historic Preservation uh, uh, and the specifically their African-American Cultural ha Heritage Action Fund. They understand that. And as everybody likes to say nowadays, they understood the assignment. And they delivered. And they not only that, they delivered in a way that's going to now put us on the national map to bring the kind of funding we need to get this work done. I also want to recognize that they have invested in um, the August Wilson Center and also the Opera House in, Home in Homewood. So those are huge victories. And we do want to see our assets coming back to life. Also recognize the PA Historical and Museum Commission for their facade restoration um, investment. With that, I'm going to pass it back to Felicity. Thank you, Marimba. I'm going to move us into our policy updates here. Uh, we are running a little bit behind, so I want to, because uh, we just have so much to talk about. These are just highlights. I want to thank our presenters tonight for their patience. We will get to our development presentations uh, shortly. I want to talk a little bit, uh, so we're just going to touch on a few policy highlights here again. Um, we are for the, those of you that wonder what this acronym is, you will see us use it, but I'm also going to spell it out. That is our Greater Hell District Master Plan. That's what GHDMP stands for. Uh, you guys know that we are in the process of adopting, of updating and adopting that document. Uh, here are a few events that we have collaborated on with the city, uh, Councilman Lavelle's office. So we had a uh, speak and treat. So this was an in-person, it was outdoors. That's how we were able to do it during COVID-19 safely. Um, this was in collaboration with the city and Councilman Lavelle's office at Representative Wheatley's annual health and wellness weekend. So if you stop by the tent, you filled out those uh, forms on the iPad, you got a cookie, you got a, a ticket to get a funnel cake. Uh, you were participating in that process to get input from you about what you want to, what, uh, what your interests are and things that you want to see uh, in this plan. Uh, we also had collaborated with Domi and Port Authority for transportation mobility pop-ups around the neighborhood. So you might have seen them at Grandma B's or Big Tom's Barbershop or the Hill House or Ammon's Pool um, this summer. Those pop-ups, this is the flyer for that down here, we're collecting information from you all. One of the things that we hear about the most is parking, buses, streets, uh, sidewalks from you all in the neighborhood. And so we have made the city know that that is a priority as well. Why we're focused on that there. And then uh, since 2020, actually, we've been hosting uh, bi-monthly Hill District plans update meetings because there's so much activity happening in the Hill District. Um, there's, you know, our Greater Hill District Master Plan update. There's a Bedford Choice development that's coming down the pipeline. There's a Greater Hill District Parks Master Plan. Uh, there's city planning initiatives related to Port Authority, their next transit, which I'm going to mention a project to you in a second. We wanted to make sure that you didn't have to go to 15 different meetings because we know we're all busy. You can't go to 15 different meetings, but we want you guys to be able to have access to all of the information. And so we work collaborated with the city with city planning. Uh, shout out to Ose Akin Lotens, who, uh, you know, is, is, our, is our partner there. Uh, project managers and agencies to host these bi-monthly plans meetings so that they can come and provide updates to you and they can tell you here's the next engagements, here's where you can engage on, online, here's where you can uh, engage in writing, etc. so that you have access to that. Speaking of which, our next one is going to be Tuesday, December 7th, so save the date. Information will be circulating where you can sign up and register that coming soon. Looking at our commercial redevelopment task force. So this was originally formed in 2018. You will see all of our partners down here on the bottom. Uh, it was uh, established by the Hill City C uh, along with Councilman Lavelle to bring together government agency partners, technicians, uh, community development actors to focus on bringing investment for primarily infrastructure dollars, but to support their facility support and facilitate the redevelopment of our commercial corridors in the Hill District neighborhood. Um, and so some things that we have been working on this last year, we've really been working over the last several years. Remember said, things don't move uh, as quickly as we would like to think they do. Sometimes it takes years of planning and work to advance some of these items. So we've been working on advancing into infrastructure funding requests. Congressman Doyle made $8 million worth of infrastructure requests for the just the Hill District. Um, we've collaborated with the Port Authority on 
um, a potential project when they went through the next transit planning. I, said, I mentioned that earlier, that is their long range planning for Allegheny County. When they went through that process, one of the projects that rose to the top was the, the, the top priority project was a connection between the Hill District, Strip District, Oakland, Hazelwood, Carrick, and Overbrook neighborhoods. Um, so we collaborated with Port Authority on a planning grant a $742,000 planning grant application that we have submitted to the federal government so that we can work with our community on planning what that connection would look like. We've collaborated with DOMI also on an application to the Department of Transportation for their RAISE grant for streetscape, intersection, other transport transportation mobility upgrades. That's valued at $15 million worth of investment to come back just to the Hill District. Now, these are all applications. We haven't been awarded this funding yet, um, but we are you know, hopeful, uh, we are excited, and we hope that we are able to get this funding to come back to the Hill District neighborhood to really support the redevelopment of our commercial corridor. Some of our other policy work highlights. Again, I can't cover everything. I got to keep us moving forward here. Um, we were able to secure uh, Lower Hill commitments from the city. You will see the agreement here that was signed by Councilman Lavelle and Marimba Malines, our president and CEO. That was done this year. Um, we were able. We scored Lower Hill projects through our community review process. Uh, the Hill CDC and neighborhood allies have collaborated with First National Bank on a five million dollar gap lending program. Uh, we've collaborated with the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership on their mobility plan. You will see an image of that mobility plan down here to, to reconnect the Hill District and downtown. We don't want transportation mobility to operate in a silo. We want to make sure that bus routes, um, that streets, infrastructure, all of that is facilitating traffic going both from the Hill District to downtown and from downtown up to the Hill District. So as we are bringing these businesses online, as these developments are happening in the neighborhood, we are bringing the foot traffic to support them and the dollars to support them. Uh, we've also been collaborating with Clearway Energy on creating a district energy solution for the Hill District. So we are focused on being, you know, we talked about uh, innovation. Remember I mentioned that at the very beginning of this presentation. We are focused on how we can innovate to move the Hill District forward and support uh, the redevelopment. And so that's one of the things that we are looking into now with Clearway Community Energy. Of course, there's our development review panel, which you all are very familiar with. Again, been in existence for the last six years. We've reviewed over 40 projects. Every time you come to a community meeting and you fill out a scorecard, it was in person where we had our community meeting box. You have participated in that process. Uh, you'll see the website linked here. We've reviewed 12 projects this year. Seven have been approved. Three are still under review. And two were decline, are, are declined projects really because uh, the development team has abandoned the process. Uh, we've added three new member organizations. This is the third expansion of the development review panel process. And then just one, you'll see some projects there on the right. You'll recognize Big Tom's and Rose Street and Lecce, who is presenting tonight, uh, and the Hildeshick Renaissance project as well. Some outcomes that we have uh, related to this process. So we've collaborated with the URA on the Center Helping Grocery Store site. I'm going to mention that in a second, highlight that. We've collaborated with Big Tom's, the University of Pittsburgh, on MWE participation. The university will have the highest MWE participation in university history, which is, I mean, it, again, we talk about wins and exciting things happening in the neighborhood, the highest Black business and women business participation in university history. Um, we collaborate with the University of Pittsburgh on their operating engineers apprenticeship program. So two Hill District residents have already been hired full time, full university benefits. They will receive the training um, as operating engineers. These are, are life changing, uh, not just jobs, but careers. And then another example, which you're going to hear more about this evening, is a public art project for 346 Miller Street. Uh, the community will actually have an opportunity to vote on which mural uh, you want to see happen in that project, as well as securing 30% affordable housing uh, in that development at 50% area median income. As you all are familiar with, many of you participated in the grocery store pro uh, process. Uh, you'll recognize the, the community meeting that was held virtually. Uh, here was the website where all of the interested grocers present, uh, um, presentations uh, and proposals were linked. Uh, their questionnaires, excuse me, and you will remember that we had that community meeting on September 20th. Uh, the URA acquired ownership of that property at the end of 2019, really the beginning of, of 2020. Uh, there was a partnership for this process between the URA, Councilman Lavelle, and the Hill CDC. It was a modified DRP process because these are tenants. Uh, this is not a, this is not a full scale development project. Uh, they are not owners. They are tenants. And it was the same process that was followed for the Center Heldman RFI that resulted in CARES community being selected. Um, and just highlighting really quickly, like what was that process? 
interested parties completed a community questionnaire. That way you all could know who they were, what they were interested in ahead of time. Um, and you could study that before they even came to present to you. Uh, there was a presentation to the community by each of the interested parties. And then there was a community scorecard where you all were able to give lots of information about your interests and desires in that process. Want to jump into here lastly uh, on our year in review update. So community engagement and special initiatives. Uh, ongoing community engagement, as you all know, are our minimum quarterly community meetings, which we are doing our, our final one of the year here. Direct call meeting reminders, you guys receive those from us. Uh, you know about those. We have our social media, our website, emails, printed flyers, and community events. Um, we've added this year our weekend roundup so that you have a weekly newsletter and insight into what's happening in the neighborhood. And then, of course, uh, the opportunity to meet one on one or a group of up to five people uh, with our president and CEO every Thursday morning from 830 to 930. Uh, Marimba has, you know, she probably is, <laughs> is not as excited as I am about the fact that she's been booked all the way through December. Um, and she was booked through December months in advance. Um, but she she really enjoys being able to connect with you all one on one over coffee and donuts and hearing from you all. Uh, so please, you know, the calendar is open if you were wanting to get one of those slots, they go quickly. Uh, so register, please, uh, in, in advance. Related to special initiatives, um, we've talked earlier at the presentation about the workforce work related to our New Granada Square apartments and retail construction jobs. That was our uh, Workforce Wednesdays in partnership with Mystic Construction. We did a special Workforce uh, Wednesday in partnership with Pittsburgh Technology Council, 40 by 80, and a printy PGH focused on tech careers. Remember, I mentioned to you all about our Hill Tech Society. We know that you can get you don't have to have a college uh, education and you have a job starting at $40,000 to $70,000 upon, you know, while you're training, while you're training, you don't have to complete training. It's while you're training, you're receiving this plus benefits. Uh, and so we want to make sure that you all have access to those job opportunities. And so we've partnered with um, these organizations to help bring these, re these opportunities to the Hill District neighborhood and connect you all uh, to them. And then most recently, we just had a uh, collaboration with Turner Construction for a kids winter clothing giveaway. And here's just some images of some of those events. Um, our kids winter clothing giveaway, our workforce, and our two types of Workforce Wednesday events. All right, so that completes <laughs> our, our highlights for our year in review and annual, annual report. Um, I thank you all for your time and in joining us this evening. So next up, we are going to move into our development presentations. Uh, I want to make sure that 346 Miller Street is on the call. Kevin, if you could message me and your team just to make sure that you guys are on the call, uh, I will uh, message me while I'm going through kind of a little bit of background here. All right. So what is RCO? So I mentioned that this is a development activities meeting. It's also a DRP meeting. Uh, RCO, or Registered Community Organizations, is a new regulatory process passed in 2018. It was created, um, it creates an RCO status for community-based organizations who are, who are involved in community development. There are responsibilities for those community-based organizations, uh, one of the, and there is a responsibility of developers to participate in what is called a development activities meeting. A developer is required to hold this DAM or development activities meeting at least 30 days prior to a public hearing for a list of qualifying reasons, um, mostly if they are being reviewed um, by a government agency or a government board. Hill CDC is the RCO for the Greater Hill District, and the projects today are included in that geographic boundary. What is the DRP? I, we talk about this almost every single community meeting. Uh, you all get our emails about it and our, our social media posts. So I'm not going to go too deep a dive here again because we are behind schedule, but it is the Hill District's Unified Community Review Process. You'll see the nine member organizations that appoint residents to help us review the process. And this portion of the development review panel, which is you all, every single resident having a vote. It's a democratic process. Each resident's vote is, is the same um, to participate in this process, vote and give input. You guys know that you can go to www.hillstreet.org backslash DRP to view projects that are approved, under review or declined. Uh, and Im the image on the right shows you examples of what you will see. There's a web page for every single project. All the documents for that project are uploaded so that you can read them for yourself. You can follow the timeline uh, in, in the process. You do not have to wait for a project to get to a community meeting. You can go online and read everything you want to about the project, reach out to us about the project. Uh, because as soon as it is submitted, those projects are uploaded and get their own web page. And we send that information out via email and on our social media as well. 
why do we talk why am i talking about the two of them together the rco ordinance requires uh rcos to establish orderly and democratic means for forming representative public input and a clear method for reporting to the city actions which accurately reflect the community's position and that is our drp process again this was this predates the rco ordinance the rco ordinance is only about three years old now um the drp is six years old uh and so i want to make sure i note that we have merged the two processes together so that the final community meeting is of the drp process will serve as a dam meeting generally uh, sometimes a project may not be ready to have a development activities meeting which we're going to see we're going to have a presentation tonight from lecce school who when they had their drp uh, community meeting they weren't ready to have a development activities meeting yet so they're having a development activities meeting tonight but we try to merge the process to simplify it uh, and streamline it so both of these projects have received a passing score at the drp committee level and one has already been approved by the broader community. Again, Lechi did complete its community meeting, a DRP community meeting uh, earlier this year. And so now they are presenting to you. Uh, how will you score the project tonight? So 346 Miller Street is the only project that is being scored tonight. Lechi was already scored by the community. Uh, you can go to their web, the website for that, www.hildershick.org backslash, backslash, excuse me, Lechi School. And I'll drop all of these in the chat to view all of that information. Um, the, the scorecard though for 346 Miller Street is linked at www.hildershire.org backslash score. There's an orange button that says score here. You click that and you will be able to fill out the Google form. Uh, there's room for written commentary. So feel free to provide written commentary to the development team as well. Uh, please fill out the scorecard if you are one, a Hill District resident. And two, you have either attended uh, this meeting tonight or you are gonna watch it, you know, we always upload it to YouTube and then blast it out to our community. Uh, you've watched it through that as well. The scorecard will remain open until midnight, Thursday, November 25th. So that is one week from today. So please make sure that you go and score the projects. And with that, I'm gonna bring up the uh, Miller Street team. Uh, it is our responsibility in these meetings just to give you guys a little bit of information about our engagement with the developer. So this is a mixed income housing development project. It's the rehab of a former Miller Street Baptist Church. They received an 80% or B score, which is uh, re the requirement to pass the DRP committee level. And that is why they are here presenting to you this evening. And so with that, give me one second here. I'm going to go ahead and unmute Kevin. Um, Give me one second, Kevin. I'm sorry, I didn't see you in here originally. You're unmuted now, Kevin. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Any other members of your team that need to be unmuted as well? Yes, Johnny Miller is on the uh, on the uh, Zoom as well. Let me see. Johnny, you are unmuted now as well. Thank yeah. you for joining us. All Thank right, you. Kevin, you know that you have 15 minutes to present. I'm getting ready to set your timer. I will follow up with you in the chat to let you know where you are. And I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Can I go ahead and share my screen then, Felicity? Uh, I, will, I have your presentation right here. Just oh, tell me when to perfect. move forward and I'll move the slides forward for you. Absolutely. So first off, I want to thank each and every one of you for caring enough about your community to get involved and vote on this. Um, two main goals of this presentation tonight are obviously number one, the most important, preserving the legacy of the Miller Street Baptist Church. That is number one, and you will see in our presentation here how we propose to do that in multiple ways. Second, uh, one of the most important things as well is rehabilitating an existing structure so it does not become a public eyesore or something worse by, you know, being abandoned and just going to shambles. So with that said, you know, here's our first slide. We have the existing church structure that was purchased by my client, um, Johnny Miller, who is on the uh, call as well. Like I mentioned, he can answer questions as far as the construction portion when we get to the Q&A. But as you can see, it is kind of, uh, I don't want to say in shambles, but it's getting there. It, there's some growth on the outside front. There's uh, some roof leakage, windows knocked out. Uh, so when my client bought this property, the ultimate goal was to go ahead and rehabilitate it and bring it up to uh, something useful for the community. As you can see on the picture on the right, that is the most prominent view of, I'm sorry, could you go back Felicity one? You should uh, be good the now. most prominent view because there's nothing on the lot next to us. It is the side of the structure that we are going to present that we, or propose that we put the mural on and you'll see that here in the uh, uh, next couple of slides. So go ahead to the next slide Felicity. So 
So this, this layout that we are proposing, like I said, it is an existing three-story structure. We are proposing basically three one-bedroom apartments per floor. That way we do not have to do a ton of demo work for the existing structure. It's uh, basically, as you can see, you enter the main entrance corridor there, and we have apartment one on the left as you go down the corridor, apartment two on the right, and apartment three on the back wall. Uh, the reason being for this layout is obviously all the windows, the existing windows on the exterior walls for egress. And also it makes the most sense. We do have the ability to combine two of these one bedroom apartments to make a two bedroom unit if that is something that the, um, you know, a, a person that would be leasing this would want. So go ahead with the next slide. Key project highlights. Number one, we're gonna focus on affordable housing, a huge, you know, bullet point. Two, public art and local artists, that's number two. Number three is the empowerment and number four, mobility. So go ahead to the next slide. Affordable housing. Uh, Mr. NG from Chan Real Estate LLC, the owner of the property, who is uh, you know our our client, has been made uh, a commitment to the Hill CDC to provide 30% of units as affordable housing for a term of 15 years, and also as mentioned in one of the previous slides by Felicity, 50% uh, AMI. So go ahead and next slide. Pretty basic there. Public art and local arts. Go ahead and next slide. So local artist involvement, uh, what we are planning on is the right side of the mural of the wall. You will see that in, like I said, the next coming slides here. But uh, Thursday, October 28th, we co-hosted an informational session with Jordan and Felicity, who are approximately five local artists, all fantastic artists. You'll see their, uh, their presentation here shortly. Explained our budget to them, our thoughts, our concepts, and we had hosted a Q&A after our presentation for the artist's thoughts and input on the project. We went ahead and released an exterior wall architectural drawing to the participants for their use in a conceptual sketch to present with their bid package to um, for each one of them. And they provided concept, concept sketches from each artist along with their bids. The budget was set between five dollars and $10,000 for this portion of the work. And bids were received uh, Friday, November 5th uh, in coordination with Jordan Smith. And once the community has selected an artist, they, the bid will be awarded. Go ahead, next slide. As you can see here, the artist murals that were submitted out of the five artists, three artists have submitted. Um, option number one, Ray Butler. Option two, Juliandra Jones. And option three, Devron Daly. The link below, and it's also on our um, Hill District website, but there is a the link listed there below to go ahead and vote for your favorite. Me personally, I, they're all fantastic. Um, option three does really highlight the... Um, you know, the Baptist church um, as its legacy. And I really kind of favor that one because of that, but that's just me personally. And I'm not trying to sway any votes as to who to vote for, but it's just, it's, it to me hit the, hit the key points. So go ahead, next uh, slide, please. Economic empowerment. Um, couple bullet points, recruiting and engaging MWBE contractors will be the primary goal of our, um, our recruitment. This will be a non-union project local contractor involvement along with spreading the word through the Hill CDC and the community will be a vital part of the bid process and working in collaboration with the Hill District. Now, I just want to touch on some other things. You know, we will receive a list of local contractors from the Hill CDC for all trades of construction and set up our game plan is to set up a Zoom session for all the contractors to go ahead and explain the scope of work and host a Q&A session afterwards. Uh, this will occur approximately on or around January 10th. And the reason I say that is we are still getting approval through uh, zoning. That's why we're here. Once we get approved for zoning, we can go ahead and finish our construction documents through PLI to get permitting. So we're forecasting January 10th, but that obviously may shift. Um, and again, as we mentioned, recruiting and engaging MWBEs will be the ultimate goal of this Zoom meeting that we are going to host. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Project timeline, this is just, again, a rough timeline, um, because like I said, we don't know if we're going to get held up in zoning or PLNI, the process after, if we do get approval from uh, this DM meeting, but um, we'll see. So these are just, again, just timelines. November 18th um, is the meeting, obviously, we're in. 22nd, we're hoping to, if we get approval, uh, go ahead and resubmit to zoning. December 1st, go ahead and finalize the building permits to PLNI. Go ahead, next slide. Again, January 10th, 
MWBE recruiting via Zoom session. And February 1st would be bidding proposals being accepted. And then after that, obviously, construction will begin. And again, we can, uh, you know, in the Q&A, if anybody has questions on these timelines and things like that, Johnny Miller is on the call to, you know, also uh, answer those questions. And the biggest thing here is mobility. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, it's a small image, but it gives you an idea that is the property of the existing church. As you can see, there is no room on the existing site to add parking on site parking. It's just it's we've tried, you know, acquiring vacant lots adjacent or even remotely close to the church to acquire these, but nothing has come up. We've tried time and time again, and, and we just seem to hit a dead end everywhere we go. Uh, so Due to the site limitations, our options are including the following. We're providing 10 lockable bicycle parking stalls in the basement of our proposed project. Busing availability is right down the road, and you'll see um, when I get through this slide. On the next slide, there's a map. I'll point these out to you, but Center Avenue at Miller Street. It is 395 feet from the project's entry to the bus route. Parking leases are available directly down the road as well at Crawford Square parking lot that is 365 feet from our front door. And again, you'll see that on the map coming up here. And we are currently awaiting, we've approached PPG Arena in hopes that they would provide us six parking spots in the, the one of their lots, being that it is the closest parking lot. Um, we're still waiting on that. Um, that's our hope and goal is if we could get those six and along with our three that would require our nine required parking spots for the property. We have however received the variance approval for the required parking because of the lot situation and also because we were able to prove that you know prior when it was a church there was no parking it was all on street um, and we're doing our best obviously to accommodate each and every tenant. So go ahead next slide Felicity. As you can see from the map here, 346 Miller Street, that's our project. Crawford Square, directly down the road, like I mentioned, would be the lease uh, permit parking. Directly northwest, Center Avenue, Miller Street bus stop, that is the closest bus stop. And then obviously, like I said, uh, last but not least, if we can achieve the acquired six parking spots from PPG Arena, that would be the ultimate goal because then we would have free parking and not have to pay. So go ahead, next slide, please. As you can see by the picture here, this is the parking variance as we received from zoning. Corey Lehman, the main zoning administrator, went ahead and approved this. Like I said, we, we provided sufficient evidence that, you know, it was an existing church. There were X amount of pews in the church. And for our required parking spots, one per unit, we meet that. So that, as you can see, there is our letter for our variance. We do not want to obviously um, have that as the only parking, but we wanna to try to be, like I said, have options for the tenants. So go ahead, next slide, please. And last but not least, I just wanna thank you for your time and attention and we are opening the floor. Felicity, unless you have anything else to say or add to, you know, to that. Nope, thank you, Kevin. All right, yeah, All no right. problem. So you had about five minutes left. So came in, came in under time. Um, we are going to oh, open great. up now <laughs> for a Q&A. Um, if anyone has any questions, please, um, or, or wants to be unmuted to ask a question, please let me know. Um, send us a note uh, so that we can unmute you. Unfortunately, at one of our last, unfortunately at our last community meeting, we were Zoom bombed. Um, some of our fellow community partners were Zoom bombed uh, in the chat and um, via uh, voice sound with racial slurs and other things. And we have to protect our community. Uh, we're sad that, you know, we, we've experienced that. Uh, and so unfortunately we've had to institute some, some security measures um, so that that doesn't happen again. So thank you all for, for bearing with us. This is new, as you know, to, to a Hill City C community meeting. I feel like I should play the uh, some music in the background while we wait. <laughs> I feel like we need the Jeopardy music. What do you think? I, that's what I was going to say. Jeopardy music in the background while we wait. 
take some time, soak in the information. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my fault. Take some time, soak in the information. You know, we'll hang out here for a few more minutes to see if you guys have any questions you want to drop in the chat, raise your hand, let us know in the chat. Um, Okay, so we did get a comment from Facebook here. So give me one second and then Derek, I will come right over to you. Let me read this from Facebook. Um, we did receive a comment that said one thing that would have been helpful would have been an aerial photo to show what is around the church, but the individual, this is from Phyllis, she will Google map it. So that was the only comment that we have uh, on Facebook right now. Derek, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you uh, and let you jump in here. Derek is one of our uh, Department of City Planning staff for the Hill District. Hi, yeah. And just a clarification, you mentioned that you needed a variance. Is that what triggered the development activities meeting requirement was the variance? Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So uh, the variance, um, we needed a Hill District approval. That was part of it, not just the parking, but that was part of it. And also we applied for the variance for the um, square footage per lot size for the units each. Um, we, we did get that approval as well. So. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, we'll take that as a good and sign. I apologize then. for not having there... <laughs> If there I apologize any... for not having that aerial to the person that had that comment. So yeah, that would have been a little bit helpful to see the surrounding, but the, the lot to the right of us is vacant. It is a vacant lot. It's uh, it's just not for sale, so. All right, we do have one question. Give me one second here. I'm dropping into the chat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute. Give me one second to scroll through. Why? Hold on. Not everyone, not everyone's showing up in that window for me. Give me one second. I'm going through this way. As I said, this is a little um, different for us. Fine, participant. All right, Gil, I am about to unmute you. Please ask your questions to the development team. Uh, so considering considering the layout uh, in like the floor, so you have two that are have sight towards the front and then you have one in the back. Have you determined which units will be affordable versus which units will be market rate? We have not yet. And that's a great question. I do want to point out um, the whole entire first floor is by code required to be ADA accessible. That is a huge, and I'm glad you brought that up because I did not mention that in the presentation. So we have not determined our team yet as of which units will be affordable. Um, I feel like that will be something later on down the line that we would um, go ahead and approach and kind of coordinate with the Hill CDC. Okay, thanks. No problem. Thank you for that question, Gil. Yeah. All right, with that, I put in the chat here to please visit www.hillshire.org backslash score to click the orange and then click the orange score here button. That's gonna take you to a Google form to fill out and submit for this project. We also wanna get your community input on the mural. So I wanna make that very clear. You need to score this project. What do you think of the project in general? We also wanna hear about the mural, uh, which, which mural you're most interested in. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat as well to skew excuse me, to score the murals, um, please visit www.hilldistrict.org backslash Miller Street Baptist Church. That is also the DRP page for this project. Um, so you will see lots of information there as well. You will see an orange button on that page as well. It'll be at the top, the mural proposals with the images. You will see an orange button there to take you to a, a different Google form to score the mural proposals as well. So please, we're looking forward to hear from the community on that. Uh, we don't have a deadline right now as that is something that would come much further down the road, you know, once they have begun construction. So, all right. Thank you. With that, we're going to move on to our next presentation this evening, which is the Lecce School Project. So we're going to run through this process once again, let you guys know our engagement um, with the developer. So this is a mix, mixed income housing development project. Uh, it's the rehab of the former Lecce School plus some new construction townhomes on some vacant lots. Uh, they also re they received an 80% score cumulative. So when we talked about the other project, 
That was an 80% score just from the DRP committee. This is an 80% cumulative score from both the DRP committee and the broader community. They did already present to the broader community their project was scored at the time. They were not ready to move forward with the development activities meeting. Again, you know, to Marimba's point earlier, these projects take a lot of time to make happen, to put together the funding, to get all of the, the zoning and the different pieces that go together. Uh, and so they are coming here before you today to this development activities meeting, but that does not mean the input you give here uh, is, is, is lost or, or, or meaningless. Uh, the input that you give here, you heard Derek on the call earlier, he is here to record your input and comments, which will be uh, sent to um, the approving board and the approving agency for that they that they're seeking their regulatory approval from uh, as well. So please make sure that if you have comments that you you make sure that they are heard uh, and and any questions that you have as well. All right, Jennifer, let me go ahead uh, and bring you up. Give me one second. And then you can let me know who else from your team, I'm unmuting you now, please let me know who else from your team I need to unmute. Hi, Felicity. Um, Michael Polite, obviously. <laughs> I got Brian, Michael. <laughs> Brian Allmeter. Okay. Um, Lisa Carver. And David Martin. Yeah, David Lisa Carver. And Dave. All right, I think everybody should be unmuted. Is there anybody that's not from your team, Jennifer? I think that's good for now. Okay, already sounds good. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set your timer. As usual, I will follow up with your countdown in the chat uh, and here you go. Okay, well, thank you. So my name is Michael Polite. I'm executive uh, vice president for Beacon Communities. Um, and tonight, so our, you've already gone through the, the rundown of who's with us. I'll sort of, I'll say who's doing what. So David Motley is our development partner on the um, transaction. Brian Almeter and his firm are driving our site design and um, coordinating our zoning um, presentation and requirements and such. Um, and of course, Lisa Carver is representing PWWG, who's our design, design architect. And so again, happy to be here tonight to reintroduce the project and spend some time focused just on our um, zoning matters. So uh, I'll handle reviewing just a quick update of the project and the description of what's in it. And then we'll hand, I'll hand it over to Brian so that he can handle the zoning matters. And then finally, Jennifer will um, review um, our schedule and our um, green uh, features of the development. So here we go on this first slide, um, just, as, just a brief overview of what the, the existing building is. So uh, it's over a hundred year old building. The initial part which fronts on the cliff and then an addition was made in 1941, as we say here. Um, what are the components of it besides the physical buildings? Um, we tell we tell you about the seven vacant vacant parcels, all together, which will be used to create um, the development that's described here. Um, would you go to the next slide, please? So the stuff that people want to know: forty-two apartments within the um, historic historic school, and you see the mix. So mixes of ones, twos, and a couple of threes within the existing building. And then along the vacant parcels that front onto cliff, four townhouses. Out of those 46, 38 of them will be long-term affordable. That is controlled both in rent and in income for 40 years. The remaining eight will be um, market rate, that is without um, income um, constraints. Let's go to the next slide, please. So I said I would be quick. Brian, would you pick up the existing conditions? <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll try to be as quick as you, Michael. Um, 
I just wanted to kind of go through the uh, existing conditions. Uh, this was a survey that our office uh, prepared uh, for Beacon Communities. Uh, to the left is the Allegheny River views overlooking the river. To the bottom of the page is uh, Crawford Street. Uh, to the right is Bedford Avenue. And to the north is the uh, St. Joseph's uh, Home uh, Sisters of, of uh, Charity uh, property. Uh, the property uh, consists of nine uh, individual tax parcels, uh, four of which are currently owned by the URA at the corner of Crawford and Cliff Street. The remaining five are owned by uh, Energy Innovation Center uh, or a related entity, Pittsburgh Greenways uh, Corporation. Property contains uh, approximately 60,500 square feet or about uh, 1.4 acres. Uh, it's zoned, um, the majority of the property is zoned RMM with a small snippet of the triangular piece on the uh, left-hand side of the page uh, that zoned park. Um, on the property as shown here is the original school, 1905 school sort of in the middle center of the page with the 1941 edition facing uh, Bedford Avenue. Uh, the other large rectangle uh, on this exhibit is the parking area uh, that was originally for the school. Uh, that's about uh, 80 feet wide by 180 feet deep. So it was a pretty good size uh, pavement uh, area. Um, if we could go to the uh, next slide, please. So this is the overall uh, proposed development plan, uh, still in a schematic uh, moving into a design development stage. Uh, as you can see, the existing uh, school building is noted as having 42 uh, units. There's, uh, there's a variety of levels here, which makes this, of course, a little bit challenging from the site planning perspective. Uh, but the intent is to uh, maintain all of the door openings at the various levels from uh, Bedford uh, uh, Avenue all the way up through to, uh, to uh, Cliff Street. There is about uh, 20 feet of grade change. So we're, 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 we have some difficulties in trying to attain the uh, ADA uh, accessible routes, but we're, we're able to do that by reconstructing some of the uh, steps and uh, plaza areas along uh, the uh, top side of the building or the, uh, the top side of the sheet. Uh, the intent is to uh, rebuild some of the retaining walls that are currently on the property and create uh, accessible ramps and uh, uh, to, uh, to provide uh, accessible uh, uh, routes uh, to and from the uh, public streets. Uh, as you can see toward the upper part of the page, we are uh, showing a um, 36 uh, car parking area. Uh, we've narrowed that up a little bit and the reason why I said 80 feet uh, is currently the width. We really only need about 60 to 62 feet to meet um, uh, zoning code. So we're removing quite a bit of pavement, but really uh, providing enough parking spaces for this, uh, this community and redevelopment plan. Um, the intent is to meet the zoning requirements for the parking uh, uh, using the 70% uh, uh, rule, which is uh, one space is required per unit. 70% of those need to be car or vehicular parking. The other 30% can be uh, bike parking, which we're proposing both inside the uh, renovated school as well as some uh, toward the bottom of the sheet or to the west uh, that would be outside bike parking spaces. Uh, in addition, as, as Michael had pointed out, uh, we are proposing four uh, townhomes on Cliff Street overlooking the uh, Allegheny River Bigelow Boulevard side. Um, we're really pretty tight there between the existing right-of-way of Cliff Street and the top of the hill before it slopes uh, pretty drastically down toward uh, Bigelow Boulevard and, and, and to the north. Um, so we're in fine-tuning the, the design of that um, you know, as we speak. To the lower part of the page and, and at the corner of Cliff and Crawford, uh, we are proposing to uh, construct uh, and install a community uh, playground and some urban uh, farming and, and open space uh, for this community. Uh, as part of that, uh, this would also be an area for some stormwater management facilities for uh, directing and, 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 con and controlling the runoff uh, from a portion of the site as required by the city. 
Uh, if we could go to the next page, please. So uh, as part of the uh, uh, design process, we did have a pre-application meeting with the um, Department of uh, uh, City Planning uh, and, and have gone through some of those items that uh, we believe are needed for the, uh, for the project uh, and the approval processes. We will need to go to the Zoning, zoning Board of Adjustment for minimum lot size uh, for the uh, number of units being proposed. Uh, front and side yard setbacks for townhomes uh, on the uh, on the north side of cliff. Uh, special exceptions for residential compatibility and for the tot lot, and a special exception for uh, parking, uh, because we're trying uh, not to put extra curb cuts in or uh, off street parking on the townhouse lot itself. Uh, so we're trying to to utilize the existing parking lot, which is an adjacent uh, parcel. Um, as, as we discussed, we know that we need the uh, URA's approval to transfer four of the vacant properties where the playground is. Uh, in addition, uh, it's very likely that we're going to consolidate all of these nine parcels uh, into uh, two lots. Again, Cliff, Cliff Street is, is dividing. Uh, that will uh, assist in um, uh, meeting some of the zoning requirements and uh, just makes sense from the development perspective. Uh, we also will have uh, certain uh, domey approvals for like curb cuts and uh, street trees and, and, and the normal uh, infrastructure type uh, permits. Uh, one of the things we wanted to mention for the benefit of the community, uh, we are uh, looking at, because this is in a, uh, um, a landslide prone area, we are doing the due diligence required to uh, determine stability of the properties. And because the townhomes are, are uh, on the uh, steep slopes or overlooking the steep slopes of uh, Bigelow Boulevard, um, we're doing some due diligence there and we're looking at the possibility of um, possibly vacating a portion of Cliff Street to accommodate uh, those buildings. Uh, but uh, uh, that, that's still, still being uh, looked at. Uh, Jennifer, if you wanna uh, jump in for the sure. sustainability requirements. Mm -hmm. So we um, will be pursuing Enterprise Green Community Certification um, under the 2020. So, you know, um, we're working really hard to provide, you know, access, um, an accessible ride to the to Bedford for the um, public transportation. We'll be using, you know, water saving um, fixtures um energy star appliances energy efficiency you know we'll be uh, recycling waste during construction providing recycling um, storage for tenants using recycled content materials um, buying as much locally as we can using engineered wood products uh, we will be required to do stormwater management plan and we will be um, planting native and adaptive species in the landscaping, trying to use as many healthy indoor products, paint, sealants, um, flooring, things that don't off gas. Um, this building will be all electric. Um, and we will be providing our um, residents with conservation training and tips. Um, next slide. And then our schedule is, um, you know, basically we're going through our design development and our lender and investor due diligence at this time. Our schedule is to close and start construction in September of 2022. Um, we have at least a year in construction. So by the end of 2023, we should be complete and then occupying the units um, over a four to five month period do, during January to April of 2024. Um, so I think we only wanted to focus on, you know, those items, um, but, you know, we had presented previously to the community that we were, you know, absolutely um, going to attempt to promote the cultural legacy of the school. Um, preserving the auditorium and the stage, um, potentially providing um, uh, exhibits from previous um, folks in the community who went to the school. 
Um, we're definitely working on a lot of job training initiatives with our community partners. Um, and we will, we, we will have a very robust uh, on-site resident services program. Thank you. I think because they're really only, I think we've burned up our time um, and we focused on the things that weren't covered the last time we were together. But, all but, right. Yeah, yeah. We're ready for all the questions. <laughs> I would say, Mike, it's up to you guys. You still had a minute 30. I was just getting ready to type that in the chat that you had a minute 30 left. <laughs> um, but this is just showing you some of the, you know, use up every second you can, I guess, if you need to. Um, <laughs> This is just showing some of the building floor plans. So again, same process. Uh, we will now um, be looking to take questions uh, from you all. And Derek is just like he recorded them also for the 346 Miller Street project. Derek will be recording, uh, recording questions um, from you all as well. So we did receive, give me here one second, some questions in the chat. Um, give me one second. So the uh, was a question related to the affordable units getting 70% parked, but market rate get one to one. Can you guys explain parking related to or explain some of the parking there? Yeah, so let's let's be clear. That's not, the, there aren't um, the 36 parking stalls that are on site are available to all the residents. The 70% um, system that, or model that Brian was describing is really, um, a model that's uh, established by the city as a way of recognizing that in certain developments, um, it's appropriate to satisfy uh, the needs that the property develops or generates through both bicycle and um, cars. Yeah. So the affordable people, affordable units will have access to the parking just like the market rate. Thank you for clarifying that, Mike. We have another question here uh, from Facebook. Um, Phyllis was asking that she's saying that she was interested in seeing the report on the steep slope sensitive land for the townhouses plus the vacation of Cliff Street. You guys want to talk a little bit about where you are in that process or? Sure. So, so one, I'll just start. Just to say directly, the point right now is that um, we're doing the analysis, right? To understand exactly what the land will allow us to do. And as you said at the very beginning, you know, we, we submitted an application to PHFA with, based on the best data we had at the time. So here we are, now it's time to actually drill holes in the ground. And that will tell us exactly where we need to place that townhouse building. Um, the vacation part of of Cliff, it's really recognizing that it might make sense to pull the buildings closer and we're actually within the right of way of Cliff. Um, and we're talking about that part of Cliff that's between um, Crawford Street and where the St. Joseph's House of Hospitality land or property begins. So just the part of Cliff that directly abuts um, the parcels where the new development will own both sides of the street. And that's just literally a separate process, right? It's a process that goes through city council because they have to approve that disposing of public property. We're being um, transparent so that everyone knows, this is how we're, we're essentially figuring out this, this, this um, situation. And this is what we described as one of the solutions. All right. Are there any other questions if you guys could um, submit those to me uh, or raise your hand if you want to ask your question live, please do so now. We'll continue to monitor, have our team member Jordan is monitoring our Facebook. All right, well, I will take that. If there aren't any questions for you guys, I haven't seen any hands raised. We don't have any 
uh, items on Facebook. Um, so I will go ahead and thank you guys for joining us. Uh, again, this project has already, oh wait, we do have a question. I'm sorry, someone raised their hand. Give me one second for the presenters. All righty. Please ask your question now for the presenters. Oh, hi. My, I was, this is Felicia. I just wanted to ask, you mentioned that you were saving the auditorium in this building. That's right. What's the seat capacity in the auditorium? <laughs> I actually don't know the answer to that. So let me just, well, if someone else on the team might know that, um, but so we didn't say it up front, but we are, we are pursuing not only low income housing tax credits, but historic, so federal historic credits. So that's what's driving, I mean, it requires um, preserving um, the auditorium. Oh, okay. The auditorium area, we're gonna use a portion of it as our community space, right? Okay. So okay. We're balancing all of that, because we have to require, we have to provide a certain square footage of community space per PHFA's standards. And then we have standards too, right? Of what do we need in order to um, bring all the folks who live within the development into the property if we, when we need to speak with people. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike, we had a question here about how big is the auditorium? I guess square footage would be a good way to explain it. I think it's around 2,700 square feet. Including the stage, yes. About 2,000, just the auditorium space. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us. As I said, this project has already gone through a DRP committee process and a community scoring process and presentation. Uh, this was their, their development activities meeting, um, which they had tonight. Comments will be recorded uh, by Derek and questions. Um, thank you all for joining us. We're going to go ahead and move forward here in the rest of our uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I am doing a time check. We only have 12 minutes left um, in, in our meeting tonight. Um, so I'm going to bring Marimba back up here uh, from our team. I am going to tell you guys that the Hill District data that I was going to cover, um, it's quite a bit. And I know that it is, it is, as I said, we have about 12 minutes left in our meeting. So I'm going to make sure that that is covered at our December 7th planning meeting. Um, it, it is data that is supporting our planning process. So that ties in perfectly with um, that meeting. So make sure that if you were interested in hearing about the Hillshake data, you register for that meeting. I'm gonna stop sharing here for a second so that I can move us forward uh, in our presentation uh, for the last few minutes. Um, Marimba, give me one second here so I can put up how you can continue to stay connected to the Hill CDC, which you can do so right here. So be social with the Hill CDC. You can join our email list, which I mentioned, you know, you will get at least a weekly newsletter, a weekend roundup every Saturday and Sunday morning. Um, that is at hillshire.org backslash sign up. You will also get other email notifications, meeting reminders, events, things of that sort. We have a list of over, it is now over uh, 2,500 uh, residents and stakeholders. So it is continuing to always grow. Uh, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at My Hill District. We are also on LinkedIn. You will see that as Hill Community Development Corporation there as well. We have a, quite a following uh, on our social media. Uh, Marimba, I'll turn it over to you for how we're gonna wrap up and use the last 10 minutes of our meeting time. Thank you, Felicity. Uh, well, the first thing I want to do is just say thank you. Uh, we have, uh, as Felicity said, some really important information and data about what's happening in the Hill District trends of sorts relative to uh, home ownership, racial demographics, 
um, development investments, locations um, and target areas that we should be focused on and shifting of population and so forth. So we really wanna share that information with you. We do encourage you uh, to join us at our planning meetings uh, so that you can get information and be an informed resident uh, and or stakeholder of the Hill District. Uh, in addition to that, there, there's been some breaking news relative to the Lower Hill District. So I'm gonna ask Felicity to navigate to those slides uh, and then we can um, wrap up and have any final discussion uh, for the balance of the meeting. We'll just talk about these latest updates, which is primarily, you probably have heard in the news that uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins um, who have the development rights for the Lower Hill District are in the process uh, of uh, being sold. Uh, to the Fenway Group. Obviously, we have not confirmed this. I know there are employees of the Penguins on uh, in the meeting today. If they are able to confirm, that's great. Uh, if not, we will assume that that is uh, the, the trajectory of the team. Um, so just a few points of information. Uh, the pins are currently valued at $845 million. Um, uh, the Fenway Group uh, owns the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park, 80% uh, of the New England Sports Network and the Liverpool Football Club. Uh, the FS group, as far as we are able to uh, gather is, um, uh, in terms of its ownership group, includes TV executive Tom Warner, Le LeBron James, Jimmy Ivine, I hope I'm um, pronouncing that properly, I'm not sure if I am, uh, Pittsburgh native uh, Larry Lucino and other professional sports owners and executives. Um, obviously, we're gathering information wherever we can. So uh, we feel pretty good about most of it, but just understand that we are learning with you uh, at the same time. Next slide, please. We are, um, go back up one, Felicity, I'm sorry about that. We are, um, relative to the Lower Hill District, the we do not know the status of the Lower Hill development rights. Uh, there has not been any communication to date from the team to the Hill District or to the Executive Management Committee. Uh, and so far as we know, the development rights, we presume would go um, to the new ownership group. Uh, it's our understanding that uh, Maria Lemieux will continue to be a part of the ownership group, uh, but, and, and that some of the executive team will be retained but we do not have any information beyond that. Uh, we have urged uh, elected officials to get information about what this means for the Lower Hill development rights. As you can imagine, that site alone is valued considerably high. Uh, and we need to make sure that the new ownership group understands the commitment uh, that comes with that ownership. And so uh, we will uh, certainly be keeping you abreast as we are able to about what to expect relative to, um, to that transaction. A uh, couple more updates. Um, I'm gonna hand this off to Felicity to go over uh, the final updates and then we're gonna wrap and open for the last uh, few minutes for discussion. Thank you, Marimba. Uh, we've previously reported to our community that the first um, LERDA loan by the development team was made um, uh, just a couple months ago in the end of September, 7.1 million, 7.187 to be precise, million dollars was deposited into the Greater Hill District Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund to support uh, redevelopment projects uh, throughout the Middle and Upper Hill. Um, unfortunately, that was $313,000 short of what the commitment was made uh, between the Lower Hill Development Team and the URA, which you will see the agreement here on the left. Um, the Lower Hill Development Team has, has stated that the short the shortage was as a result of closing costs and fees um, for the loan, which they took out. Um, however, as you will see highlighted again here at the bottom of the screen, it is the in the agreement, it is the responsibility of the development team to pay those costs. They were not supposed to transfer those costs onto the community. Um, we still do not have an update on when the balance, so that $313,000 will be paid when the first loan to the Greater Hill District Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund will be made whole. Um, unfortunately, as I said, there's just no update, no timeline, no information on when that will happen or how that will happen. Wanted to also celebrate, uh, of course, the updates on the Ammon Recreation Center. We are very excited for uh, Hiddleshire children to, to utilize that space. You'll see an image here of the ribbon cutting. It's much needed investment into that space. It was $120,000. However, we also have to, to um, be 
clear and candid with our community that the commitment made in October 2019 at the URA board meeting for the Ammon Center Rehab was valued at $1 million, which you see highlighted here in the green. Um, so while we've received that first $120,000, it is much needed investment. Ammon still needs a lot more investment. It has not been invested in, um, in, in a, quite some time, in years. Um, and so we don't have an answer as of now, but we would like to see the balance of that million dollar investment uh, that was committed in October 2019 at that URA board meeting to Ammon. Uh, and I think that's it for our really quick updates um, here that we had. Again, unfortunately, we don't have time to go through the Hill District data. Uh, that will have to be covered at our December 7th meeting. I will make sure that that is on the agenda that we do not skip it. So please uh, register for that and join us. It will also be virtual again. As Marimba said, we are not able yet to convene in large numbers uh, in person. And so we are, are, you know, of course, trying to find ways to keep our community as engaged as possible in the meantime. Um, I'm going to stop my screen share now. We have a few more minutes, uh, just about four minutes left in the presentation, uh, in our meeting, excuse me, for any uh, questions. If you do have a question, feel free to put it in the chat or raise your hand. And if you don't, that's fine too. I'm sure everybody is eager to get the rest of their evening started. Okay, if all hearts and minds are clear, we are going to wrap up. We thank you for joining us at our um, fourth quarter, the Hill District Community Meeting. Uh, and our annual meeting where we have been able to provide uh, our accomplishments for this year, at least some of our accomplishments for this year. Our biggest accomplishment is continuing to support the growth of our neighborhood and uh, build the collaborative relationships that we need for our neighborhood to flourish. And so we ask for your continued support. Uh, we will be doing an end of year appeal. So you may get an email asking us, asking um, from us asking you to donate a few dollars uh, towards, the, towards the mission of our work. We burn for the mission we come. We all, we all, we all, um, we, we leave none on the field. I mean, we leave it all on the field, excuse me. And we really want uh, to know that you all, you know, support our work. And so we do ask you to contribute however you can, whatever is meaningful to you. And you'll be getting that in email. If you haven't registered, you can sign up for our registry, um, our email list in particular at www.hilldistrict.org slash sign up. And with that, we are signing off. Have a good evening. Thank you.